So this is a national solidarity act on climate event. So it's happening all over the nation and the main rally is being held in Quebec City today. So we are doing this in solidarity and support of the Quebec rally. And the reason why it's the main rally is being held in Quebec is because we're going to have 13 premiers meeting in Quebec on April 15th. And so we want to send a message to those premiers telling them to act on climate. That we are at a pivotal point right now where we need to make changes. Well, essentially that um, there are a lot of impacts to environment, ecosystems, to the people living in northern communities. The impacts are to water, land and air. And that our government is pro-industry, pro-oil industry. It's reinvesting in non-renewable fossil fuels. What we're asking our government is to focus on renewable green energy. We, we are doing this to demand climate protection as well as renewable energy solutions, but also recognizing that the indigenous communities in Fort Mackay, Fort Chip, are deeply impacted by the oil industry, specifically the tar sands. Um, and we want to be able to bring awareness and to bring remedies to that by, again, focusing on green energy and getting the government to divest from the oil industry. It's understandable. We understand that the oil industry is putting food on the tables of most people in those northern communities. We understand that. We understand that certain First Nations communities are benefiting, benefiting from the oil industry. What we're asking is that there be a transition plan and that whether it's retraining people in those communities toward the green energy sector, wonderful, great, that's one plan. Um, looking at again, divestment strategies which don't focus on the oil industry. So what we've seen in other countries is that there has been revenue brought in by royalties, but what those countries have done is they've reinvested into other sources of, of revenue away from industry. So that's what we're asking at this juncture. We're losing our elders like crazy. We're losing our young ones because of this greed of money that is happening. Our children have nowhere to turn. And all they're doing is committing suicides. We're being blamed, as Native people are being blamed again, our men for killing our, their women, which is not true, which is something that should be looked at instead of blaming, putting blame on everybody. Let the blame be in the right place, and that's the place that's the oil companies. That's where the blame is, and that's where we should stop. It's a sad day for democracy in Canada when we have to come out and protest like this. For a bill that is being majorly opposed by all parties in the House of Commons and the citizens and union groups and human rights groups across Canada. But still we have to come out here and, and do this public display. Whereas we should have our MLAs in Edmonton, I mean the MPs in Edmonton, clearly standing up and defining what their position is. Really clearly. That's what every citizen in this country should be asking their MP, what is your position in this bill? End of story, and vote the bastards out. I am an Inuit law student at the University of Alberta. These are things that are going to affect me as an individual, and these are going to be things that are going to affect me in my career. As an Inuit person, we have different ways of expressing ourselves. I told Dale, who was very kind enough to have me come here and speak today, that I was very happy to, to come and have an Inuit voice here. And one of the ways in which we express ourselves is through our song. And through our song, we have a particular way of speaking. 
and that's through Inuit throat singing. So today I wanted to share a little bit of that with you so that we have an Inuit voice as well because everybody here at this rally today has a voice and everybody here at this rally today has the right to express themselves and I think that we should stop Bill C-51. So first I would like to share just a little bit of our, our voice as Inuit people through throat singing and then I'm going to ask Dale if she could kindly come up in just a few minutes to come and share it with me so you guys can hear our version of our expression. Nakumi. human rights values and just causes and to be critical to the powerful forces that seek to control not only the, con the Canadian politics but also the complex situation that is happening in the Middle East including Palestine-Israel conflict. The criminalization of indigenous people's rights movements is happening all over the world. And in fact, the Special Rapporteur on Anti-Terrorism, Counter-Terrorism issued two reports talking about the criminalization of indigenous people's rights movements and how closely it is linked to movements to protect the environment. In 2007, Greenpeace was able to access a, an internal federal document that called Aboriginal peoples and environmental groups, quote unquote, adversaries of the Canadian government when it came to extractive development. The problem with this, according to the Special Rapporteur of the United Nations, is that the use of the word adversaries is often used to trigger or to implement terrorism legislation within domestic governments. By characterizing Indigenous peoples just trying to protect their rights, by characterizing Canadians who are simply trying to protect the environment and protect future generations as adversaries, thus triggering the implementation of counterterrorism legislation against those innocent Canadians, this is going to have huge impacts on our ability to protect each other and Mother Earth. I want to make a few things clear. If they, and when I say they, I'm talking about the harp right neocons, if, if they can define, then they can confine. 
yeah. I want to make sure that you remember that, so yeah. say it with me. If they can define, then they can confine. You see, they say that Bill C-51 is to stop terrorism, but you see, the problem is they control the definition. They decide what terrorism is. You want to protest unfair work conditions, so you have a strike, which is one of your foundational democratic rights? They can just call that terrorism. You want to protect the environment? They can just call that terrorism. You want to have a demonstration about anything to, uh, to work in favor of the, na the rights of First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people? They can call that terrorism. Because the fact is, and you know it and you already said it, if they can define, then they can can confine. We are here to affirm our rights as human beings. We are here to say that no longer are we going to agree to live in a society which declares that rights are privileges that can be bestowed on us and taken away from us again. We want to live in a society where rights are guaranteed. And we are not going to live in a society like that unless we build it.